This channel provides exercise advice to help people manage their long-term health conditions. However, there are some people that struggle to even stand up, let alone perform an exercise workout. So I'm going to provide five very important exercises to help those people maintain some level of mobility and functional strength. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health and if you are someone that would struggle to stand up from a chair or you have an elderly relative that needs to do some seated exercises to maintain their health then you're in the right place. I'm going to provide five key exercises that work the muscles in the legs, arms and core. The only bit of equipment that I'll be using is a light therapy band which are an incredibly versatile exercise aid and if you don't have one, you can get yourself a set by using the link in the description below. All five exercises are very gentle by their nature and can be done from the comfort of your own chair. It will only take you about five minutes to perform all five, which you can do once a day on every day of the week. So without further ado, let me show you how to go through them. Right, the first exercise we're going to do is going to be using your therapy band and this one's going to be the chest press to work the muscles on the chest, the shoulders and the back of the arms and get the arms working a little bit, get some mobility into the elbow and the shoulders. So for this you need to place the band behind you so that the band is situated across the upper part of the back where the shoulder blades are and then you want the ends of the band to come up underneath your armpit and you want to be able to take hold of the band just on the side of the chest on each side. So then that way, the, the, the actual band should feel a little bit tense across the top of the back. The movement then is you're gonna stay upright in that seated position, so you're not using your chair to lean back against. So bring your body forward so you're upright so we can engage your core muscles. And then from there, you're gonna push the ends of the bands away from you to stretch the band. And I want you to try and get your arms as far forwards as possible. So allow the shoulders to round off and then slowly let the shoulders come back, allow the elbows to bend as the fists are coming back towards the ribs. And then when you feel that that tension is kind of released and there's not much resistance, then you can push the arms away from you again. So it's a nice, slow, steady, controlled movement. And really you should be aiming to do about five to 10 of these, but all the while you're trying to maintain good posture. So keep the body still, don't allow the body to move around. Allow the shoulders to go forwards, but you're trying to keep the spine still. Okay, the second exercise is going to be the seated row and this is basically using the therapy band again but opposite to the way we did the first one. So with the chest press we were trying to stretch the band pushing the arms forwards. Now we're going to be trying to stretch the band pulling the fist backwards. So for this you need to anchor the band around your feet. So to start off with, just straighten out your legs in front of you and keep the foot upright so the toes are pulled back towards you and then you want part of the band to be round the mid foot and for this particular one you want to make sure that the ends are about the same length because then what you can do is you can adjust the amount of resistance by wrapping your hands around the band which creates more tension on it when you start to do the movement so you can choose where you want that tension and where you want your hands so sit yourself up tall the movement for this one is we're going to be pulling the fist back towards you so while you maintain good posture, I want you to think about pulling the shoulder blades back together. So we're activating the muscles across the top of the back and then start to pull the elbows back past the waist. See if you can get the fist to come up close to your ribs and you should feel a lot of tension now in the muscles on the top of the back and then slowly allow the band to go back to the start as your fists go forwards and the arms straighten out and then begin again. So like with the chest press movement, you're gonna to aim to do somewhere between five and 10 of these really slowly. And again, like with the chest press, just make sure the spine stays still so you're not rocking your torso forwards and backwards. So the third exercise is to develop a lot of your core muscles. We're also gonna incorporate some spinal rotation to get some mobility in the spine. But at the same time, where we've got the stretchy band, we're also gonna be working into stability of your shoulder joints at the same time. So I want you to hold your hands on the band so your fists are about the same width as your shoulders. Place your arms out in front of you. If you do have shoulder mobility issues, you don't have to bring the band up the same height as your shoulders. You can hold it a little bit lower if you need to, if you find that's a little bit more easier for you. But I'm gonna hold it shoulder height. 
and then you're going to try and stretch the band by pulling the fists apart just a few inches to create some tension on the band. Sit yourself up tall and then from there maintain that tension, maintain the width of your fist now with the stretch on the band because that's going to work into the shoulders a bit. But I'm now going to rotate my spine so I'm going to twist my body, turning the shoulders to one side, come back through the centre and then rotate to the other side. So we can do this movement maybe three, four or five times each way. Nice, slow and steady, but you're trying to make sure that you stay upright with your body and you're always trying to pull the fists apart to maintain the stretch on the band. So working into that shoulder stability and that spinal mobility. Right, these last two exercises, you're not gonna need your therapy band, but these exercises are going to be isometric. So that means we're going to be activating the muscles and then for these last two it's going to be the muscles of the legs but we're not going to be moving. So what I want you to do is sit a little bit further forwards into your chair and I want you to have your feet about the same width as your hips on the floor and you need to then bring the feet back so that the knees should be in line with the middle of the foot. So we don't want the knees too far forwards over the toes for this, but at the same time, we don't want the feet too far forwards that the knees are over the heels. So bring the feet back a little bit so the knees are in line with the midfoot. From here, you can just rest your elbows onto your thighs, and these are the muscles that you're gonna feel working as we do this exercise. And essentially from there, you're gonna push your feet down into the floor as though you were trying to push yourself back but you're gonna push through the balls of the feet, but keeping the feet flat on the floor, and you're gonna hold that push into the floor for about a count of five. So the idea is from there is I'm going to push my feet down into the floor hard, and I'm gonna keep pushing. I can feel these muscles now activated. Hold that for five seconds, and then I relax. Okay, and then I'll do the same again. So I'll push the feet hard into the floor, feel the tension in the legs, hold for a count of five, and then relax. Now by keeping the body forwards and allowing your elbows to rest on your knees, it will just stop you from actually then pushing yourself backwards. So from there, just make sure you lean the body forwards a little bit, get some weight then through the feet. So then when you push hard into the floor, you can feel that tension for five seconds before you relax. One other point to note is you, for this one, obviously that you don't want the feet to be able to slide. So if you are on uh, a hard floor like I'm on, you probably want to put some shoes on so the rubber soles allow that extra friction. Or if you're doing it on a carpet, that would be just as good. You don't need the shoes on for that, just use it with your socks on or barefoot. Right, the last one is essentially the opposite of the one we've just done. So we're gonna activate this time the muscles on the back of the legs instead of the top of the thighs. So the setup's gonna be the same. You want your feet about hips width wide on the floor. Again, knees just over the midfoot and allow your body to go forward so you can rest your elbows onto your thighs. So this time I'm gonna think about trying to drag my feet backwards towards the chair as I'm gonna try and pull the heels back. Obviously the friction of my feet on the floor won't allow the feet to actually move, but it's as though I'm trying to slide my bottom forwards onto the chair. So from there I'm gonna pull my feet backwards. I can now feel the activation of these muscles on the back of the legs. Hold for five seconds as we do that isometric contraction and then release and then I'll, after a couple of seconds, we'll do it again. So I'm gonna pull the feet back, pulling them as I'm trying to slide them back and slide my bottom forwards, then relax. So again, like with the last one, you can do this maybe three, four, five times, whatever you feel is necessary to try and then stimulate those muscles on the back of the legs. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay active and keep moving to feel better.